man. He was filled with the Holy Spirit, the scripture says, and he was a scholar, well-versed in Hebrew scripture. Anna was a widow of many years who practi practically lived in the temple. She was a prophetess. That means that God sometimes spoke through her. She had no family, and in that culture, you could say she was on welfare. Frederick Buechner tells the story of Simeon this way. Jesus was still in diapers when his parents went to the temple in Jerusalem to present him to the Lord and to offer a sacrifice. That's when old Simeon spotted him. Years before, he was told that he wouldn't die until he saw the Messiah with his own two eyes, and time was running out. When the moment finally came, one look through his cataract lenses was all it took. He asked if it would be all right to hold Jesus in his arms. Mary and Joseph said, yes, but be careful not to drop him. Lord, Simeon prayed as the baby played with the fringes of his beard. Now let your servant depart in peace according to your word, for mine eyes have seen your salvation. The parents were pleased as punch, and, to ble and he blessed them, too, for good measure. Then something about the mother stopped him, and his expression changed. What he saw in her face was a long way off, but it was there so plainly he couldn't pretend. A sword will pierce your soul, he said to Mary. He would rather have bitten off his tongue than to said that, say that. But in that holy place, he felt he had no choice. And then he handed the baby back to her, her mother, his mother and departed in something less than the perfect peace he had dreamed of all those years. Harriet Tubman was only five feet tall, but this black woman helped many slaves escape to Canada through the Underground Railroad. The story says that she often waited in the train station with no idea when the next train was going to come. When asked why, she said, I know it's coming sometime. This sounds strange to us in this frenzied society. What does it mean to wait with uncertainty and yet confident in the end result? To Tubman, the station was the place to be waiting for a coming train. The tracks outside the station were proof enough that a train would finally come. Likewise, Simeon and Anna were stationed in the very place, the Temple of Jerusalem, where the Messiah would surely come. At eight days, all Hebrew babies were taken to the temple to be circumcised and to be given a name according to, to the law. After 40 days, when the mother was considered to be pure, the parents went to the temple to offer a prescribed sacrifice and to present the baby to the Lord. Simeon was promised by the Lord that he would not die until he saw the Messiah. Did he expect to see the, the redemption and consolation of Israel in a baby that was still gurgling? There are many words to use for the Spirit of God that was present in Simeon and Anna. There was the hope all Jews lived with that a deliverer would come to save them. God gave Simeon a promise that the Messiah would come during his lifetime. Simeon and Anna were willing to wait with hope until God's appointed time. They expected a better future once the Messiah was here. And like Martin Luther King, they said, I have a dream that one day my people will no longer be oppressed. I have a dream that shalom will, end, will come with wholeness. God's people. In the past, the, the Jewish people suffered slavery, experienced the wilderness, were taken captive into Babylon, and saw their temple destroyed time after time. Surely, the Messiah would free them from tyrannical rulers 
who called themselves God. I always like to see how artists of the past present Bible stories. In this Lauren Z Zetti's paint painting, you can't quite see it, but Jesus is sucking his thumb. In Rembrandt's and De Helder's paintings, Jesus' bright eyes are riveted on Simon as he sings his canticle of praise. Tizot portrays the setting in a crowded, noisy temple court. That's not the way I pictured it in my mind. I thought that it was a quiet setting in the temple between prophet and the parents in, on a weekday when it was, there was nothing else going on. Not that way. In Bellini's portrayal, Jesus is swaddled so tight, he looks like a board. I prefer the warmer, nurturing pictures of lesser-known artists who show their adoration of the baby, like these. If Simeon and Anna had not been expecting Jesus, they would not have seen him. Mary and Joseph looked like the average parents coming in to, the, to present their child to the Lord. But because Simeon's heart was expectant, he saw more than a couple with a little baby. Expectancy runs from cover to cover in the Bible. Virtually every word of Handel's Messiah is from Old Testament prophets who lived 700 or 800 years before Jesus. Even back then, the wave of expectancy was building. And the last word of revelation in the Bible is the word of expectancy. Maranatha, come Lord Jesus. The best modern story of expectancy that I know of is Leo Tolstoy's favorite tale, the, co the cobbler's Christmas guest. In a small Russian village, there lived a, a shoemaker by the name of Conrad. The friendly shoemaker always had a kind word or a consoling word for everyone. On Christmas morning, some neighbors came to visit Conrad because he had no family, and they were surprised to see his face beaming and his cottage decorated and his table set with lots of delicacies. His humble cottage, they asked, why did you do all this? Are you expecting company? Conrad replied, last night the Lord appeared to me and he told me that he wanted to be my guest today on Christmas Day. I'm all prepared for him. After the neighbors left, Conrad sat waiting for his hallowed guest. While he waited, a beggar passed his window, ragged and half-starved. Conrad called him in, fed him, and gave him shoes for his nearly frozen feet. And after the beggar left, the old woman hobbled by who was carrying a sack of wood. Conrad served her dinner, let her rest before the fire, and then helped her on her way. Again, he sat by the window waiting for his important guest. Suddenly, he heard the sobbing of a child. When he opened the door, he saw a frightened, cold youngster. After some warm milk and soothing words, he reunited the child with its worried mother. Once more, he returned to his vigil, but the night was falling fast. Where was the promised guest? Anxious and weary, Conrad dropped to his knees and said, Oh Lord, what has delayed you? And out of the silence came the word, Conrad, do not be dismayed. 
for three times I came to your friendly door. I was the beggar with frostbitten feet. I was the woman given food to eat. And I was the lonely child in a lonely street. Marcus Borg and John Dominic Crosens ask what it would mean for Christians to recognize Jesus as the one who reveals God's dream for this world. From Dr. Bill Bonat come these suggestions for increasing our expectancy of God at work around us. First, schedule some time alone. Take the phone off the hook. Take your iPad and your, and your cell phone back to another area of the house. Get rid of every distraction you can think of. And after some silence, ask God what, think about God uh, when he was especially close to you. What did you discover about God? Thank God for that understanding. Then think about people, treasured people who inspired you. And what did they teach you? Thank you for the understanding they brought. And then lift up people that you know need God's special assistance. Ask God for eyes to see the presence of God in others more clearly. Second, ask for something you need that only God can give. Write down that request and put it somewhere where you see it daily. That will trigger your gratitude when God's good answer comes. Blessed are the expectant, for they shall see God. And third, find someone that you can help anonymously. Because Jesus said, inasmuch as you do it to one of these, you have done it to me. Throughout the Christmas story, grateful people sang songs of praise. Mary's song at the angel's announcement, Elizabeth's song when Mary visited her, Simeon's song at meeting the baby Messiah. When Anna met the Messiah, you could say her song was, go tell it on the mountain, Luke says she began to praise and to speak about the child to all who were looking for the redemption of Jerusalem. May we have the faith of Simeon and Anna to recognize the holy in circumstances and people around us, those that we meet this year. Amen.